Um, we'll see you then. Back once again, Hollywood studios have made what they're calling a final offer to the largest actors union, SAG. And then they ended the talks. Last track in Hollywood led to over $2 billion in economic losses. Studios seem to be determined right now to resist some guild demands. Let's get an update on this. Joining us now from Los Angeles, Jonathan Handel, entertainment attorney at Troy Gould. Uh, Jonathan, good of you to join us. First of all, give me a sense of where, where things stand at this hour. It's a pleasure to be with you, Mike. Thank you very much. Um, we are in a zone right now where we're, where we're sort of waiting. The, um, the studios and the Screen Actors Guild are meeting tomorrow, Wednesday afternoon. Uh, the studios say they will not entertain counteroffers. They're just there to uh, listen to questions from the Screen Actors Guild. The next big moment is going to be next Tuesday when the smaller actors union, AFTRA, comes back with the results of ratification of their agreement. SAG has pledged to defeat that deal, and we're going to find out whether they've succeeded in, uh, in a week. They now, you, probably you, have not. You point out a very important uh, distinguishing characteristic of these talks. AFTRA and SAG have, have pretty much gone into these talks together over the years. Uh, their efforts to merge have failed. They now decided this year to do things differently. It's gotten pretty acrimonious. Is how much, if this is ratified by AFTRA members, how much of a problem does that present to SAG's position? Well, your, your summary is exactly right, and it presents a great problem, particularly if the deal is ratified overwhelmingly. In that case, SAG is really going to have to adjust its uh, view of the world. The SAG Hollywood leadership in particular, uh, which is the uh, aggressive faction here, but there's a difficulty if that deal is ratified, but on a low percentage, say in the 50s or 60s. What happens then is we enter a gray area where SAG, AFTRA, and the Studio Alliance all jockey for position while we watch and wait under the hot Los Angeles sun. Uh, two things quickly. First of all, does the AFTRA deal include a no-strike clause, or could AFTRA members or would AFTRA members be compelled to cross lines to work if given the opportunity? AFTRA members would be compelled to cross lines to work, assuming that there are lines to cross. The Screen Actors Guild may not go on strike because, uh, first of all, that's a three-week process, so we won't see a strike, if at all, uh, for quite some time, a month or so. But secondly, it takes a 75 percent affirmative vote of those voting for SAG to authorize a strike. They're afraid that they're not going to get that, and that's why we haven't seen a strike authorization vote just yet. How much of, from what the studios had, to, had learned and had to deal with in the Writers Guild strike, have they incorporated or, or resisted in these negotiations, and specifically when it comes to some of the multimedia residual fees and things such as that? Have they, uh, have they given SAG something akin to what the Writers Guild got, or, or are they, have they dug in their heels on this? No, the, uh, the, the heels are being dug in in the other direction, actually. The studios, the alliance, has given the Screen Actors Guild basically exactly what the writers got. They've tracked that deal uh, in great detail, according to a spokesman who I spoke to at the Studio Alliance. But the Screen Actors Guild says that deal is not good enough for them, even though it was good enough for the writers, the directors, uh, after in their daytime deal and now after in their primetime deal. That's the tall wall, the difficult wall that SAG faces to try to undo a deal that was good enough for everyone else. All right, you know this business a lot better than I, but, uh, but for my years as an aftercard carrying member uh, here in the New York television business, um, an awful lot of the SAG people, I understand, don't work a lot, don't make a lot most of the time. Uh, are they likely to be able to generate anywhere near the 75 percent to, to authorize a walkout? Well, it's possible. It's very tough to tell. I think that that's a cloud of uncertainty that everyone is operating under. But, you know, the AFTRA uh, effort, the anti-AFTRA effort on SAG's part, is essentially a dry run or test run to see whether they might be able to garner enough support. Mm -hmm. If SAG can defeat that deal, they may well go for a strike authorization. And talk to me in the last 30 seconds here. Uh, how, how much front-loading did the studios do in terms of product so that if, if it does come to a walkout, they're not going to get hit as hard as they would have I understand they got a lot of films ready to come out because they anticipated this. Well, they do have some films ready to come out, but film production has slowed almost to a stop right now. This is more a film strike as opposed to the Writers Guild was a television strike. Television production is continuing. It will probably sputter along for a while. So front-loading, I don't think viewers will see an effect of this for certainly not till the fall television season or later. All right, Jonathan, have to leave it there. Appreciate it. Great job, Jonathan Handel.
Uh, Troy Gold in L.A. giving us this overview of what's happening out there in Hollywood. Got uh, trouble at the Met, how a very, very old sculpture ended up broken into pieces. Plus, we're going to come back with your AccuWeather forecast and an Oscar-winning director taking a look at the life of Elliot Spitzer. It could happen in a moment. Back again, trouble at New York's Metropolitan Mu Museum of Art. Officials say a 15th century sculpture came loose from its moorings, fell to the floor, and broke into several pieces. The museum says this damaged piece is a, a terracotta sculpture of St. Michael the Archangel. It was by Andrea della Robbia. It dates back to 1475. It's now been transferred to a, what they call a conservation area. There has been a preliminary inspection. There are suggestions that this can be repaired and one day return to public view. We'll watch this develop. Well, here we are. It's Tuesday, but never too early to talk about our 4th of July forecast, which is why we have...